I have to ask you, because I know everybody's out there wondering, like when you are watching YouTube and you see a video that comes up that's made about you, like I've had horrific videos I've seen, like my, uh, my first wedding video, for example, you know, that's still, I'm, I'm getting over that one. Right. Like, so what happens when you're going through YouTube and you see a video with your name on it, like with hate, like what's your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, lately, like lately when it happens, it's because, well, that's what you get. Like, I, I'm not going to lie. I'm provoked. I'm, I'm definitely, uh, you know, not, I, yeah, right. I, and, and you know, what's funny is like, I never cared to be that way, but something happened within the most recent events where it, it, it kind of brought a little light to, uh, you know, you know, listen, at the end of the day, you should never say on a podcast, you got to be careful if you say something, right. if you don't mean it. Right. Yeah. And, and I have to admit when I really don't mean certain things and I got caught into the moment of an episode where I said things I just didn't mean. Well, I can only say that knowing you, like when I first saw your, you know, the podcast and stuff, I'll be honest with you. Like, it wasn't like, I didn't like you. That was never the case, but I was like, wow, this guy's over the top, the cursing, he's a DJ. And then I met you, man. And I just, uh, again, this is, we're not going to get into a reach around session here, but the reality is you're, you're very, uh, any, I, I would be challenge you to any of these guys you have problems with. If you walked into a room and you guys worked it out, I know you guys would work it out. And I, I know I speak for everybody in the trap family. When I would say that, I know we'd love to see you uh, make amends with at least two of the three of them. I actually made amends with a, quite a bit of people just by yeah. speaking to them. It all started this morning. I'm going to say this morning. I already said this on the, this, uh, I already came out. I don't, did you watch my video this morning? I went live this morning. Not this morning. No. Okay. So I already I have, a kinda, job. I have a life. I can't watch it 24 hours. I'm sorry. I know. I know. I so I, 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 I kind of already had a, a, I guess an apologetic video towards my actions. So I already said what I need to said, but I, yeah. I also want to just clarify that. Like for instance, Gary, since you didn't hear it um, this morning, I woke up to an individual, flipping me off with uh, snakes in the fat man shirt. By the way, me and Chris are good. We're, we're good, yeah. by the way. But he had a six in the fat man shirt flipping me off saying, you're a bitch for blocking the guy's name and uh, you should, you know, come at me. And I'm like, hey, bud, what's going on? You know, and he's like, he's like, I just don't think it's right how, you know, and he said what he had said. And I just said, hey, do you want to, and I never do this, Gary. Normally I just block or I talk and I block. But I was yeah. like, hey, I was like, do you want to talk? I was like, let's, let's talk. And so yeah. sure enough, he's like, yeah, I got time. Call me. And so yeah. I'm like, all right, all right. And I called, we talked for over an hour, bro. And Christ, did we like, I'm not trying to say we, we, we left Dutch rotoring, but we yeah. were really on the same page right. with things. And it was like, wow. Like, it's like, why can't people could just really move on if they just speak? Like, let's talk yeah. about it. People come after you because, you know, as far as podcasting, as far as I'm concerned with podcasts, you know, there are three podcasts I listen to. I'm not going to mention the other two on your show, but one of them is you, you partner with the guy and the other one is uh, it's primarily deals with carpet pythons. Um, and when people are taking shots at you, typically, uh, you know, it, because you're in a position where they're going to take shots at you. There's What's that saying? When, when people don't like you, it's typically for one of three reasons. They see you as a threat. They don't like themselves or they want to be you. That's typically what people say. I'm not saying that's the case here. But in any event, uh, you know you have a voice and people are coming at you. But again, I don't want to lose my message. I hope you fix everything. That's really what I want to say to you. I hope it's all fixed soon. I mean, day by day. I mean, like, 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 I, like I said something earlier this morning where – like, and it's kind of something that almost got me emotional because this is, this ties back to like yeah. me being, I got a lot of things going for me and I got myself in trouble by my mouth. You know what I mean? And yeah. so oh. what, that, that, I'm just saying, Gary, you know, there's a saying out there, you're your own worst enemy. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and so really I could avoid all this. I could personally avoid all this. If I move, if I, I'm just going to move more carefully, I'm going to move more smarter because I have that kind of limelight now. And I, I understand that, you know, a thousand I mean? percent. It, look, it, it worked to your favor. It got you where to you to where you are, your drive and, and your passion and uh, anger comes out in passion sometimes, but it got you to where you are. How did someone like you delegate throughout the years of being in the industry, working with so many pieces of shit people? And, and I'm not saying that the closest people to you were pieces of shit. But like, I don't know, weren't yeah. there times that you had to buy animals or because this was the only person who had it and that that person had a bad name? So first off, I was in the Chondro world, right? I just I just gravitated towards the Chondro community always. I, I love the snakes, but I like the people even more. And that's you're talking. I got a Chondro, my first one in 1994. I could honestly tell you, man, except for like the three years ago, I'd say is the first time somebody intentionally sent me bad animals. It wasn't Chondros. It was emeralds. And somebody on Facebook intentionally sent me bad animals. And who the hell am I? I'm a, I'm a small little guy in this huge industry. But, you know, this is before he, you know, he didn't know who I was. And I say who I was. Look, I've been around for a long time. I'm not saying in an arrogant way, but I've been around. 
And this dude, and he sent me bad animals. That was the first time that's ever happened to me in over 40 years. There's an importer in Florida, people that had a bad experience with, and I've gotten some animals from him that were questionable. But you know, at the end of the day, he did make stuff up to me, probably because I'm me and I have a social media presence. He may not have done that with other people. The reality is, how do I deal with those people, MJ? I, at this point, I, I steer clear of all that, man. I, I stay yeah. out of the drama a thousand percent. You'll never see me. I just don't do it, man. I mean, and, and we could kind of also bridge this to the fact that you probably spent more time being in the middle of people who've been screwed for sure, right? People contact me privately about somebody and they ask me, hey, what's the deal? I'll flat out tell them, you know, right. I think the toughest thing for me is and this is going to happen to you guys like in your 20s and 30s coming up right now. Well, it's different because there's social media. When I was, you know, for us, there was no social media. So people screwed people all the time. And now a lot of these guys who were screwing people 20, 30 years ago because they could suddenly everybody's reinventing themselves. What benefit does it bring me to call them out and say, oh, this dude was screwing people 10 years ago. It does me no good. It does the hobby no good. And at the end of the day, I, it's it's not worth it, man. Let's talk about how you fixed animals. I mean, okay, let's let's let the people know whoever, because I got to admit, yeah. Gary, this channel has brought in a lot of new people into the hobby, you know, and, right. yeah. and, and not a lot of people had homies like Forrest that just yeah. fed information about who's who, right? And I was Lucky to have Forrest for that. Um, um, but yeah, so I've been doing this for 40 years. I've never not had a snake since I'm 13 years old. I never went the whole Kaluba route. I went I went fast then. My brother's a lot older than me. He got me a Burmese python. I was 13 years old. Did everything wrong. Didn't know how to take care of it. But yeah, I, like I said, I I, um, I can't tell you. I, I, I always say we're so fortunate, everybody who's been doing this so long, that we found our passion in this hobby because uh, a lot of people never find their passion in life. And I have a collection now, and I, I, I'm modest. That, like I... I'm, I try to be modest with it, but man, I love it so much, man. I love seeing my animals. I have stuff that, man, it just would never dreamed of having 30 years ago. And um, anyway, so that's that's that, man. I, I'm a lo lifelong herper who've, uh, I'm at the point now, honestly, in my life, though, I'm so into the animals and speaking to people with animals. When I go out with our normal friends, I don't have anything to talk about. Now, I mean, what I want to get to next here, Gary, is breeding came to your life quite early in your, in your, in your, in your, in your, yeah. in your teens or were you, how yeah, old you uh, well, Burmese pythons. Yeah. I was breeding them at 18, 19 years old. You know, we all were back. They were learning it, but no, 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 wait, 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 no, no. Ball Python yeah. clutch story right now. Ball Python clutch story. What ball was your, very, yeah, your, ball very, python. your yes. very first clutch, Gary? Let's talk about it. Yeah. I bought a, I bought a pair of adult ball pythons, you know, and it's, it's so funny now, but the reality is, yeah, it was a big deal. They were, they were imported babies. We call them bush babies and they raised up. I bought them. I bred them. I got eggs. I had no idea what to do with them. There's a guy named John Martin. I just drove the eggs to his house and said, John, hatch them. I was so intimidated by breeding years ago. I never even thought about breeding. I, I built my collection. I built my reputation. I used to broker all the time. I know it's such a dirty word in the industry, especially with the younger herpers, you know, flippers, yeah. they call them. Right. I did anybody in the 90s and early 2000s keeping chondros. I guarantee they had an animal for me. Not, not one that I produced. I'll be clear on that. But I always brought in like me and Rico Walder, who, like I mentioned earlier, you know, we'd buy a clutches of babies from through Bushmaster. We split up the babies, put size on them, and I, I, I would sell them. And then basically what I would do is I'd keep the nicest ones back for myself. And that's basically how I built my whole collection. So the cool thing now at this point in my herb keeping career, I'm playing with house money. So when I see animals I want, it's just like these animals have paid for themselves so many times over. And uh, again, man, like we never did this to make money years ago. It, it wasn't even couldn't even fathom that. Who are some people off the top of your head right now that 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 have that that paved the road legacy in your mind? Like right, like right, especially like if you could go back as far as you can. Like I'll, I'll tell you, when you ask me who paves, who does it now? The guys right. I think of now who really brought it to the next level. Justin Kabelka to me, I think he's probably Ooh. the most. Yeah. I, 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 I could blow smoke up Justin's butt all day because I, I actually love the guy, but people don't understand. You know, they look at a guy like Justin, they say, you know, he's got all those animals, but they don't understand. There's nothing about the animals with Justin. It's about the way he presents himself with the hobby, the way he comes across. He's just, he just does amazing stuff to me. He, to me, him and John Lehman uh, from Morph Mark, I think these guys, if, if these if the hobby, if these guys were not in the hobby today, I think it would look very different. I don't know Miguel Garcia. I don't know him. But man, what he does on social media, bringing so many people, obviously Brian Barczyk, these guys, and I know a lot of people don't like Brian. That's fine. But like <laughs> a guy like Brian and Miguel, what these guys do is, you know, for the people who are non-ball python people, so they're probably thinking right now, God, he's naming all ball python people. Right. What they do is they allow me to sell 100 baby carpet pythons a year. They allow me to sell these green tree pythons. These guys bring the people into the hobby. They get into ball pythons. And after that, they want to go into the next thing. So 
it's I, I think it's so these guys are just catalysts, man, for the for the hobby. And uh, I just think they do an amazing job. Let's talk about the ball python market. I don't have a dog in this fight, right? I have, I have three ball pythons. But it, the ball python industry, to me, it's no different than any other industry, right? I mean, it's bigger. I mean, but it's bigger. No, it's not bigger. I mean, look at like there's the watch industry. There's the oh oh I, I, I thought you meant, I thought yeah. you meant within I thought you meant within the hobby. I'm so oh sorry. no no that's the biggest. Ball pythons are the biggest. But the point is, you know, for the last three years we just hit this major bump, and now people are realizing like holy crap, I actually have to do some work to sell my animals, and that's what's happening. But you got to you got to be good. You have to have business savvy. It's not just about breeding the animals. You got to have business savvy. You have to have a name and. And uh, so I don't think the ball python is different than any. I mean, look, a 10 bakeries can open up in one city and nine could go out of business. Doesn't mean the bakery business is bad. It just means that somebody else was a just, you know, better running a bakery than the other person was. Right. Guys, I know this is an exciting guy to look at, but can we please get the likes up right now for Gary? Because we're literally just starting. You know? I'm going to go back to the live with Kevin at Nerd, I think, if people don't start liking. I mean, I'll do that. Um, and I, I'm kidding with Kevin at Nerd, of course. But to me, Kevin is. Uh, I think the guy is a uh, a savant, man. I would, I, right. you know, I think he really is. Man. I, I I told him once. I said I'd bring my sick animal to him, um, you know, ahead of any vet. Honestly, you know, I just would trust him with my animal more than any vet. So, and you know, can I touch on that for a second? Because there's always yeah. the people that you know when you post about an animal being sick and you're treating it for whatever it is, a, a prolapse or a respiratory infection. People love to jump on that and say, "What are you doing? You're not a vet. You're not." And, you know, I, I think of like the farmers, right? A farmer, they, they know more about their livestock than anybody on the planet, maybe except for, you know, the vet that helps them out from time to time. But they right. have to learn how to treat their own animals. They can't call the vet every time there's a sick animal, right? First off, they couldn't afford it. And it may not even, and secondly, it may not be convenient if it's like in the middle of the night. These guys are forced to do certain basic procedures. And I think that's what it is with reptiles too, man. If you're going to keep them first. for any long period of time, you have to learn some basic stuff, treating prolapses. I'm not saying... I mean, vets are super important. Trust me, they are. I love vets. I, I have a vet. I use them regularly. But I can't run my animal to the vet every time there's, you know, a small issue I could deal with. So I think we have to start. I, I don't know. I don't know where that mentality came from, why it's so bad to suddenly try to treat your own animals. To me, it's it's a little it's a little short-sighted. I feel like some people just don't have the resources or maybe not even the financial backing to – Well, I'm not saying it should be in lieu if you have – you know, if you're financially strapped – you know, I don't think that's a valid excuse for not going to a vet because in that case, I would say, well, then you probably not to sound like I'm looking down on people. Then I say, you know, probably shouldn't maybe have the if you can't properly care for the animal, but needs a vet attention. I would say then maybe you should think twice about owning the animal if you can't take care of it properly. But I'm just saying, you know, would be, you know, I'm using Kevin as an example. He makes these videos. He's treating his animals and stuff. But I mean, the guy's been doing this forever. I mean, I hear. And you got you got respect for Kevin. Me? Yeah. Oh, I've, I have a lot of respect for Kevin, man. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've known Kevin all through the industry. Look, he's Kevin would tell you he's not he's not a people person, but man, when it comes to the animals, the guy he's he's meant for it. Gary, I want to kind of talk about some of the groundbreaking or not maybe groundbreaking, but some of the foundation breeding projects that stumbled across your experience where you felt like gave you the grasp of going to where you needed to go. Like what well, what would you say that was? Um, I think my, so for me, my most proud, uh, uh, contribution to the chondro world, I'll say, I'll start there is that, you know, people always use nest boxes for chondros. Um, and I really have been, um, pushing the no nest box. I just see, I still see till today, I, till recently, somebody with a chondro, just not using the, the nest box. And I started using the whole half bark thing on the, you know, using the whole floor of the cage as a nesting area. And it just, I, I've never used it. I haven't used a nest box in probably, I don't know, eight or 10 years. So I'm super proud of that accomplishment. I mean, people have been using the half nest box for other Python species for years. And I, it was a guy named Tom Kyogen who's in Florida. I saw Tom doing, I just said to myself, I'm going to try this with chondros. I'm tired of my animals not using nest boxes. They use water bowls. And I, that's, so that's a proud accomplishment for me. The other thing I'm pretty proud of is I saw the, the Savu um, uh, Python market about four or five years ago. I wanted them. I love animals that stay small. They go through, hey, Des, they go through uh, onogenic color changes. And uh, I just love them. And I couldn't find them. And I just said, and they're basically, we the island of Savu, right? It's a six mile by 10 mile island. And uh, they're pretty much decimated on the island. So whatever truly really here is in, in captive collections. And uh, for whatever reason, people were having a difficult time consistently producing them. And I just bought every one I could find. I bought about 11 of them. And I, I, I whiffed the first year. 
I had one baby. And then the second year, man, I just crushed it. I produced like 23 babies a second year. So I'm pretty proud of that. And I've taken that knowledge from those that particular animal, and I'm doing that with some other stuff right now. Um, if I had Bowen's pythons, I'd try it with that, but I don't. So I have them, but they're not mine. But Imagine if Bowen pythons were the price of at least a I mean, I don't know. Basin was kind of almost up there with yeah. the bullets. But as of right now, no, Bullens are still 8 to 10K. I mean, I don't know. What yeah, Bullens are up there, man. Yeah, and, and it's sad, but the reality is it's that high price that keeps the mystery about them too, right? If everybody would have them, look, look at like a, just a normal reticulated python, right? A, a Sulawasi or something, a big wild-caught animal. They're, they're incredible, man. The silvers and the yellows. They're one of the most beautiful python species out there, but they're, you know, you could pick up babies for $85 imported. I mean, no more. I don't, you can't, they, I stopped, I think they stopped importing with text. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but the bottom line is unfortunately, you know, the dollar value of these animals contributes a lot to the mystery of the animals. It shouldn't be that way, but it is. You were kind enough to put in my thumbnail, the Gary's going to discuss the highs and the lows of, uh, Oh, the, we're going to, we're going to go there. Let's oh, I'm sorry. It. Here we are in a room with so many doors we can open. We have a door of the Sanzinia. Oh my God, yeah. can't wait to open that. We have the door yeah. of the Chondros. I want to open that with two hands. But yeah, lows, emeralds. I feel yeah. like this is a good time to talk about the lows and the emeralds. Why yeah, man. I would love to talk about really quickly respiratory infections. They Look, so in this hobby, here's the cool thing, right? We can keep these animals alive now. That's pretty awesome. And we could breed these animals. That's pretty awesome. When it comes to arboreal animals, when it comes to emeralds and green tree pythons, uh, I am telling you, when they get a respiratory infection, I personally think there's a better than 50% chance. Unfortunately, you're going to wind up losing the animal. I've tried everything. I've tried sometimes. Look, I've had luck overall, but I've had less luck than I've had more luck. Um, and that's the that's our real shortcoming. We're using drugs like Fortaz intended for mammals, not intended for reptiles. And we're modifying these drugs to our animals. And uh, I'm hoping that it's going to be worth for veterinarians in the near future to start treating reptiles and start doing more research on reptiles because yeah. um, it shouldn't be a death sentence for one of these animals gets a respiratory infection. Man, I, I, I was just talking to my friend Keith McPeak last week because I have an animal right yeah. now with a, a small respiratory and yeah. I'm just not going to treat it, man. I'm not treating it. I'm trying some and it's been doing fine. It's not getting worse. It actually, knock on wood, sounds a little better. But anyway, my heart goes out to you. It really sucks. And that's where the hobby really we need some people who, in a higher pay grade than the way I can think to help figure this out because I'm not capable of figuring that out, how to treat these animals for respiratories. For the most part, emeralds don't handle stress too, too well from what you've no, experienced. Right? No, you leave them alone. Right, we leave right, them right, alone. Right, right, right. Yeah. But, but, when I, but when that's the case, I feel like first-time males, and these were first-time males, and this is just me thinking out loud. I don't know, yeah. but you know, first-hand males being with the female doing their thing for so long on top of – the humidity not being where it bees at. And I just feel like maybe, I don't know. I, I'm just praying to God. It was me that caused this. And right. this isn't, but, but Keith wants, Keith recommended that I get a culture test on the, yeah. on the, yeah. what, what, what's your recommendation on that? I've had culture tests, uh, you know, it, now listen, I want to be clear on that. I've had them done with carpet pythons, right. Man, you know, you, you, basically what you're doing by the culture, you're looking into the animal sensitivities of what antibiotic you're going to administer to the animal. That's really what you're doing. Um, and you're going to do the same thing with you for your emeralds. It's just that for whatever reason, you know, Bill swears by Fortas. We've had that conversation, Bill Stegall. So I would say to you, yes, that is the most accurate way. That's the most responsible way to treat an RI. First, I would do is I would increase the humidity with, the, with an, an arboreal. I would bump the heat one or two degrees in arboreal, I would see if the animal, animal responds to that. If it didn't respond to that, um, I might consider drying the animal out a bit after that. I would take, I would remove some of the humidity. And you could, this is all done over the course of like a four to five day period. So you know pretty quickly, if you're still having issues after that, look, also there's so many factors here. If the animal's still eating, I'm not really that concerned about it. Yeah. Once the animal stops feeding, that's what, I'm that's what I'm going to plan B. And plan B typically would be, yeah, I'm going to get a culture done. I'm going to get a swab done. And let's see what the sensitivities are. And let's take it from there. Now, let's just kind of talk about what you've – I mean, let's kind of talk about where the hobby's at right now. Pretty impressive. Social media, yeah. technology. Yeah. We're in a kind of crazy world. I, would, I mean, if yeah. it's crazy for me, it has to be crazy for you. What's your take on what's happening right now with I, I the love it, world? I love it because, you know, we, we tend to romanticize the past. You know, we talk about how the, the, you know, the mailing list would come out, you send for pictures. A lot of people were getting screwed. I mean, people were screwing people left and right. Um, there's so much more transparency now. I personally think that people are more mature now and, and just, I think it's just a more friendly environment. Um, despite the three videos that were probably just posted about you on YouTube in the last few minutes. Um, I think it's just a friendlier, I think it's a friendlier environment. 
And I just think it's better today. I wouldn't go back. I mean, I love being, I went to the very first, before it was Daytona, I was at the very first Orlando show. I know guys like Keith McPeak were also there. And I mean, man, it was just awesome. But you know, it, you know, did I appreciate it as much? I don't know if I appreciate it or not. It was my first show. I didn't really know what to expect. Um, but I loved, I loved this whole thing that I loved. I, I don't know. I, I think the hobby is much better today than it has ever been. And I think we're just on the cusp. You know, I really do. I think we're starting yeah. to pay a lot more attention to environment now. I love busting on any, you know, people all the time about bioactive stuff. I, I don't think we're there yet for green tree pythons. That's a whole another situation, but a bunch of problems, I think. But I love when people set up some amazing, they keep animals as pets now. Come on, that's awesome. You get a reticulated python, you set up an amazing habitat mm -hmm. for it. A bearded dragon, I love seeing that stuff. And that's where the hobby's going. Let me name somebody who had yeah. named their animals from Canada. Yeah. I had mm -hmm. a I had a good I had a good 20 minute conversation with this 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 lovely lady. But God bless this girl for teaming up with people like Focus Cube Habitats. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Bless her heart. She has 10 ball pythons all in four by two, all by all in four by two by twos, right? Yeah. It's like she puts so much energy on wondering like where the heat source is at where it's like right. yeah. and, and honestly i've been disrespectful to kind of that kind of information I, and i shouldn't that that's impressive because for us to have people who love it on that end of the spectrum is what we yeah. need we need that love for the animal yeah. it can't just be breed 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 it right. can't it can't Right. I grew up in a time where you didn't keep animals unless you bred them. It's just the way it was. I'm going to throw a name out. I'm dropping a lot of names tonight, but these people all uh, man, have impacts on me. And I listened to them, a guy like Vin Russo, and he, he set me straight at one of the shows. He goes, see, you have the wrong mentality. You're thinking that, you know, everybody wants to breed stuff. They don't. It's like if I said to you, MJ, you know, do you know people who breed dogs? Yeah, I'm sure you might know one or two people who breed dogs, but most people who own breed dog, most people who own dogs, I don't know, 999 out of a thousand people who own dogs, they don't breed dogs. They're just simply as pets. And I think that's the way the reptile world is going. It's just people who want a pet. You know, people are living in smaller enclosures. A lot of people are in townhouses, apartments. And it, what an amazing pet a reptile is for a smaller environment like that. So I think we're just on the cusp of this stuff, man. I think this is, and I, and I love it. Like, what do you have credit to as far as the kind of, knowledge you were able to gain pre-social media like how did gary yeah. shabino fucking learn how to take his licks and do what he had to do yeah. to progress in the reptile game pre-social media the phone i mean we were on the phone all the time that's what it was you know uh you, know, you probably heard of that Merlia Virtus forum. There was that. There was a forum there. But it was listen. It's it, it's the same today as it was 30 years ago. It's about building relationships, having friendships, sharing knowledge. You know, right. um, and we didn't. We shared knowledge with Condros, man. We really did. You know, I, I know in the ball python community years ago, people were very secretive about what genes they were working with. I'm telling you, man, unless I'm really naive, I don't remember seeing any of that with green tree pythons, you know, because we were all having the same heartbreak, man, I got an RI. What are you doing? What are you doing? I, I think there was a lot of that. So yeah, we just, it was about relationships and friendships and sharing knowledge, man. I know this all sounds very kumbaya, but I, I didn't have a lot of the negative experiences. I think a lot of other people did. I'm not really sure why. Maybe I was just really fortunate. Who is Bill Stiegel yeah. to Gary Shabino? So I'll, I'll be very clear. And I, and I, and I said this to Bill. I, I, you know, especially, man, the longer you stay with you for him, you, you know, I, knew, I know you and Andrew are very close and Des and I, I love all those people as well. But, you know, as far as my closest friends in the hobby, I've got guys like, you know, Bill and Marshall. I got Keith McPeak and I really genuinely love these guys, man. I mean, they're I don't see them a lot. I don't talk to them a lot, but they're kindred spirits. I know if I need any of those guys. And as you ask me what they mean to me, I will tell you as much as I love the animals. If Bill ever got out of the hobby or Marshall or guys like Keith. It would really bum me out, man. I mean, when I say would I get out of the hobby, I, I don't think I'd get out of the hobby, but I would really lose a lot of passion if any one of those three guys I just mentioned left the hobby. So they mean a lot to me. We just had a boa guy on, like Dabana or uh, my God, what's his name? So he's the one who created the, and I feel bad because he was on my guest. Um, I know who you're referring to. I can't Bono, uh, Bono. Is that the Finch? Is that the Vinci? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Right. So we I've got. I've heard you reference that before. Yeah. The, yes. Yeah. So I had him on the show. We had a yeah. conversation. We were talking about how, like, how I was like, dude, there's no curing fucking crypto. Like, once once that fucking emerald pukes, there's no coming back. Yeah. And he was like, well, hold. And like, he had a little bit of, like, I guess, a little bit of documentation on how maybe he could cure. And guess who's the first one in my inbox? Good old Warren Booth. And yeah. Warren Booth was like, mister, ain't no curing that shit. I'm telling you right now. Yeah. 
Um, from your experience, have you dealt with crypto? Have you dealt no. with that shit? No, never. No, man. I, I'm a Chondro dude who really slowly worked his way into boas just over the past probably Smart. six years. I've never had a bow in my life. I was always such a hardcore Python guy. So, you know, I, I'm, I have a huge learning curve with, uh, with emeralds and stuff. I've been pretty so far, man, so good, but yeah, but I've never had to deal with crypto or anything. There's species for everybody, right? Like there's yeah. certain species that people are meant to work with. Right, yeah. Gary? Some people really do things like, God damn, Alex Warren. What a guy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alex Warren. I'm so mm -hmm. envious. And, and Alex, when I say this, I say this in a good way, but your mentor is Bill Stiegel. Okay. But Alex is a good learner. Alex implements whatever he learns from Bill at home. Yeah. Alex, I feel like, is a chondro guy. I think he's, yeah. no matter what happens with this first clutch, he, or second clutch, he is meant to be in this game, okay? But he's also dabbling slowly but mm -hmm. surely into the emerald game. Mm -hmm. You looks like you tread carefully with that. Like, you... You didn't just do what I did. Like I started with imports. Who are yeah, I, I wouldn't start with imports. I just would. Hey, look, there are guys who who start with them and have some good success. I mean, you could you could talk to Ed Marino hours about this. You know, over the years, he he took his losses and he moved over to basins and he's super successful with them. Um, anyway, no, I, I would never get an imported emerald. I did a whole video on that. In fact, um, I would start with captive born babies. I have two females here now, man. That'll blow you away. They were from an imported female, but. Look, when you're buying imported animals, the reality is that you're mostly getting them from importers or brokers, and they're not going to be able to, in most cases, give you the support you need. It's just that simple. So for that yeah. reason alone, I wouldn't buy an imported animal. It, it sounds like I know it's a broken record, man, but you got if you're going to spend this kind of dough on an animal and um, you want to have an enjoyable experience, you got to buy somebody who's going to support you with the animal. I mean, how many times I, I, I preach that you could keep you know terrestrial boys or terrestrial snakes for 20 years. You get a, a chondro or an emerald, it's like starting over, man. I mean, not that literal starting over, but there's a major learning curve. It's like you're brand new to snakes, you know? A lot of people come into this game. God bless the ball python people who are just like, this is beautiful. And then they yeah. finally get that snake that isn't yeah. that snake. And it came in like a fucking piece of beef jerky. Yeah. And then the yeah. seller's like, go fuck yourself. Right. And that's how, how, how can we tell people to deal? Like, how, how do we advise people to swallow a pill like that? Well, how it's simple, man. You just tell them you got to deal with reputable people, man. You got to do your due diligence. You got to ask around. Um, that's the only way to deal with that kind of stuff. Hey, look, you know, you, you have a name in, in, in this in this game now, man. A lot of people know you. I'm fortunate. A lot of people know me. And for that reason alone, that's like that, that's just a lot of protection, man, because people are going to think twice before they screw somebody like us over just because they don't want us to start bad mouth for them. If you're a newer herper, man, you got to really do your due diligence, do your homework. We opened up the door quite a bit on the emeralds. But, you know, I, before we kind of get into the next door here, Gary, I do want to mention that you, for the most part, has had nothing but heartbreak as far as when it comes to you breeding emeralds. Nothing that as far as it's a drastic point of adults dying, but you 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 got yeah. slugs from your your most possible litter was all slugs. Is that right? right? Yeah, she gave me nine litter. That really sucked. Let me be honest. Because, hey, look, man, especially as I get older and I go, God, if I got a baby emerald now and it's going to take me five, minimally five, probably six years to get her up to size. Yeah, that really hurt, man. I came down. That was my first time trying to breathe them. And I saw a, a slug on top of the, of the substrate. And I was thinking, oh, my God, there's probably babies underneath the substrate. No, there were eight more slugs. That was a major heartbreak for me. That really sucked, man. That that really did. And it, that's not even, it's trust me, it's not even a financial thing. I would have kept every one of those goddamn things. Trust me, I would have. So that really that that was heartbreaking, man. Yeah. That's it just takes so long to raise these animals. You know, like that's the cool thing about bull pythons. You could breed a female and theoretically like less than three years, right? Or around three years, I guess. I don't know, but you know, it's it's still not a short period of time, but compared to an arboreal, man, it takes it's a it's a game of patience. So so with that being said, what's the overall goal? within the next couple of years for the emeralds? Well, yeah, I want, I have, um, for emeralds for me, I, uh, I'm hoping to get babies next year, but honestly, I'll be cheating with those because I have two Northerns. I plan to get to my buddy, Keith McPeak on breeding loan. Right. That's my goal with emeralds. The rest of the, I have about eight or nine emeralds right now. I'm raising up. I have a, a, a female basin on loan with Marshall. Um, she's older, so I don't have a lot of hope with her, but if anybody could do it, I know Marshall can, but no pressure, Marshall. If you ask me my goal this year, man, for, I want to hit on Sanzinia really bad this year. That's my goal. I have two adult females they're ready to go, Easterns, and then I want to produce a bunch of Savus this year. I have a bunch of people waiting on those, and I'm really hoping to hit on my diamonds this year. My male's a little young, but that, those are my three goals for this year. I want to produce other stuff, but those animals would really make my, 
make my season. Everybody out there, I don't care what you're into, you need to go to GS Reptiles on YouTube because I'm going to tell you right now, you want to talk about how to have fun with reptiles for the stupid. Like you, like it doesn't take much brain cells to realize how easy it is and how fun it is to keep reptiles when you follow this guy's YouTube channel. Gary, I am a huge fan of your YouTube channel, bro. Like I love it. I can't get enough of it. Well, I appreciate that. I love making the videos and I suck with putting them out. And I know that. And people remind me of that daily. And uh, I'm sorry. I don't know what else to say, except I, I'm going to get going, making more videos very soon. I have a lot of stuff. Oh, don't. Me. Okay. No, it, listen, yeah. coming from, you don't want to give false, yeah. false promises because people yeah. like you are going to be on your ass, Gary. Well, it's a truth. No, I have stuff coming very soon. No, I promise. Oh, I, yeah. I, and people think I don't like making them. I love making them. I, I absolutely do. I, I just, you know, I love making them. It's a the truth. I love the channel and I'm super proud of that channel. And I love that people watch the video. So it's awesome. There's so many people out there who could use so many excuses not to do YouTube, but let's be honest, Gary, doing yeah. YouTube really kind of helps you. I feel like oh, it helps me. It helps me tremendously, man. It helps me tremendously. You know, like I said, what's just, you know, selling animals and getting, turning people on to right. me and just seeing me and seeing how I keep my stuff. And look, that's, they're sending me a lot of money, man. I trust you. You're going to send me a lot of money. They're trusting me. You're trusting with your money. And I, I don't take that lightly. And I love that I can just open up my collection and say, hey, look, this is how I keep my stuff, man. I think uh, I, I, based on how I keep it, I, I think you'll feel pretty confident, you know, getting an animal from me. And that's it's, it's just pictures worth a thousand words. A video is worth a million words. Since now we have the condor door open, condor should be perched up like a fucking batch of bananas all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. There, I mean, yeah, mind you, if it's building, there should be maybe some type of perch yeah. behavior. But for the most yeah. part, is he is he is he accurate with that? With the, with that animal? Animal? Yeah. Of course, yeah. just a perfect pose and a nice clear eyes and yeah i mean after you do this for a while you you can look at an animal instantly one of your own animals and you can look and go you don't hear the click you don't hear any problem but you just know something is not right and that just comes in time and it's super by the way i came home earlier i'm getting ready to do your podcast i'm all excited i look at one of my beautiful basin girls and her lips on both sides were open a little bit and i'm like jesus christ i took her out I don't see any signs of an RI. I just increase humidity in an enclosure and boom, they're completely closed. So I'm going to say I dodged a bullet, but man, you just can look at your own animals and you know, when something's not right, you know, when something's not right. <laughs> I know Bill. And it hey, ruins your day. It hey, ruins your day. Shout out to the fucking big shooter from the, from the Midwest. Good old Bill Stiegel. Like Bill Stiegel. I love that guy. Right. But Bill Stiegel, I don't know if you remember this. We were all at dinner. We were all at mm -hmm. dinner. And, and guys, yes, MJ has been blessed enough to have been at a fucking dinner table with Gary Shabino, Marshall Mendes, Bill Stiegel, more than once, mind you, right? But I can't really recall what dinner this was or when, what we were doing, but we were talking about how I accidentally had two females paired up as chondros, and I didn't know. One of the other females wrapped the other female, and I was, like, trying to rip them apart. Mm -hmm. And... And then it got quiet after I said that. And then M and then Bill was like, you know, MJ, I uh, I went through the same thing and I saw that. I turned the lights off and walked away. <laughs> oh, that, that's great. Yeah, I do remember that. <laughs> and he, but, he came yeah. back and they, he, he came back and they, 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 and they figured it out. Yeah. And and yeah. maybe maybe I caused more harm by rip like I yeah. tried, dude. I there was teeth flying. It was terrible, yeah. bro. Like I thought my thing was going to die. We, we all screw up our animals far more than they're capable of screwing themselves up. We just all need to learn to relax. We just <laughs> need to learn to relax. Man, I will. I, one thing I wish we would kind of talk more personally about, Gary, um, poulter. Do you like to call them poulters? Well, it's Moralia poulter, right? It's that bird heads peninsula animal. Um, yeah, so they're Mataquari is what I deal with. That's the locality I deal with. Yeah, I just love them. I've always really. And with all due respect, this is what yeah. makes me frustrated with the ball python community because I'll buy something that's called blank. And then somebody also come and tell me, no, this is called blank. And I'm yeah. like, there's four groups of chondro, right? So you got your Moralia poulter, you got your Moralia viridis, you got your Moralia... Meridus, I think it's like, uh, you got, where's Patrick when I need him? And the fourth <laughs> one is the Bioc animals. The, Azor the Azori is the Bioc animals. But so that's really the, the scientific classification, right? They're basically saying they're all different animals. So people like Nick Mutton have been saying that for a year. You know, we all call them, we call them all the same green tree pythons, but they're all very different. I'm not sure I subscribe to that. 
I'll be honest with you. These guys are smarter than me. I don't know if I subscribe to that. Well, I have, I have chondros in my collection. I used to call RFAC locality. And I was told that there's no such thing as RFAC locality. And uh, they're all really Morelia poultry. They're all Manaquari. So to make everybody happy, um, some people still want to call them RFAC. I just say poultry. I'm not, you know, I'm not that passionate about it. I'm really not. Like when it comes to the scientific stuff and I'm just, that's not, that doesn't float my boat, man. Cause I, I just care about how we keep them in captivity. We learn obviously a lot by how they live in the wild. But for me, I really want to focus on how we keep them in captivity. That's, that's what really, you know, I'm a hobbyist, man. I'm a hobbyist. I'm not, looking to, release, I'm not looking to release animals into the wild. Um, I don't have any desire to go see them in the wild. I think it'd be amazing. If that's, you know, I don't, I don't like bugs. I don't want to do that. Um, I burn, I'm fair skinned. I don't want to do that. So for me, I, I don't really get into all that, but to appease others and to, you know, and to go along with the, nomenclature we're using today that's why i use that that's why you, th those titles it's not so, that important you know, I, I i never i mentioned this person to you before and you're like oh that's who that is and we kind of talked yeah. about it but i never actually told you who this person is to me and I'm, we're going to talk about this right now okay um shout out to my buddy juan from life's rad yeah. Condros. yeah let me tell you my buddy juan ever since i've known this guy since i was a fucking kid in pop warner football i wanted to be this guy's best friend like he was just like the cool, like the coolest guy I knew on, on just a, on, on just a, like a net, like he didn't do anything spectacular. Like I do things extra. I feel like just because you're extra. Yeah, you're, you're extra. Extra. Yeah. Juan, that, Juan is the most laid back non extra yeah. guy that makes you want to be friends with him so bad. So I've always wanted to like, and Juan's always me and him and be, we've been boys throughout since fucking like we were kids. Right. So let's speed things up to now. And Juan loves chondros and mm. What do you know? Like I'm like I'm in the chondro game and he's so respectfully just listened to my advice, but also done his own moves. Like he hears what I have to say mm -hmm. and he, he like he researches and yeah. he does what he has to do. And dude, is he not proud of the shit that he has from you, bro? Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So Juan, I, I don't know Juan personally, but I know he bought an animal from me um, just I can't say enough nice things about him and he's super supportive of me on, on social media and stuff. And yeah, I, I, there's so many guys like him, like just have that passion and that's, Hey man, I'm telling you for guys like us, you know, and Bill and, and, and Marshall who've been doing this forever. That's what makes me tick, man. I mean, I don't know. There's newer guys coming. I just said this about Johnny with the skinks on your show, just because somebody's in the hobby for a lot less time than you doesn't mean you can't learn a lot from them. And I mean that man, honestly, these guys, they see things differently. They're coming in a whole different angle um and they're coming they're a clean slate man so i love talking to these guys and finding out what they do i'd love to talk to some of these younger guys as far as what they do at respiratory infections i need to learn a lot more in that area but what i'm trying to get at with this is like you know this would you know i told juan i would love to bring you on the show man you know, not only because how close we are because just how slow he is on wanting to grow like he's in no rush like he's yeah. He's loving the process, right? Yeah. Um, and I and I want to ask him when he's on the show, but what is it about a new person that you don't know about that kind of gives them the time of day for it? Because there's so many people who could come in a way different energy where if you read yeah. what they have to say, you won't even read it, you know? Yeah. But like, what are things that you look for, Gary, as far as good right. approach, as far as a new person in the game? You know, it's funny, MJ. You, I always use this analogy. You used to work in a gym, right? Yeah. Years ago. So you had people coming into the gym all the time and you could tell by looking at him, this, this guy's in it for, he's going to be here for months. He's going to get in shape. Oh, this one's going to, I'm going to see him once a week and then he's going to disappear. Right. Oh, and probably, yeah. <laughs> right and, and, and you know what? As good as yeah, you, you felt it, bro. Oh my God. And it's the same thing with Condros, but as get as good as I like to think I am, sometimes I'm wrong. I, I really do like when, Hey, look, right. I, the thing I wrestle with is um, because I do have uh, the channel and stuff, people reach out to me all the time with questions. And the reality is I just don't have time to get back to them. I just don't. I can't get back to everybody. Um, some, depending on the questions and if they're shorter questions, they don't go into a too long a detail. I could just jump into it quickly. I'll answer them. And I I don't I don't know how to answer your question. I don't know because I, I don't want to be wrong. I don't want to I'll never blow somebody off intentionally. Like I'm not just going to answer them. I just don't answer them because I don't have time. But I, I don't know. Um, I don't know who's in it for the long haul. How do I approach somebody new into it? You know, if they have an animal already and they say to me, I've been talking to this person, I've been on this and they're doing their homework. I like, that gives me a sense of security of, uh, Hey man, these, these people are going to be in it for the long run, you know, but I, I don't know. There's no way of knowing. Cause I don't want to be, I don't want to be jerky to somebody too. I can't look at somebody and say they, they're going to be out of the game in six months. They might be in it for the next 60 years. I, I don't know that. So I try to treat everybody fairly with it. That's, that's the only answer I can give you. The money you make off of reptiles, 
Yeah. Like no matter how profitable it is, mm-hmm. is there a certain amount of that money that you shouldn't be just putting back in the reptiles? You should put in elsewhere. Like, like, like what is us, no matter what you do overall, no matter how the money comes in through the reptile game, how should we delegate our reptile yeah. money? Is, is it, is reinvesting back into another reptile we want the smart idea or is that the wrong idea? Well, I think the first thing, if you have extra money and you want to invest in reptiles, I would I would tell, I think the obvious answer is probably just to go to my Morph Market page. I'd probably start there and look at the animals I have available. And if you have to strap yourself a little bit, I can tell you you're not paying attention to me right now because I'm telling everybody to go to my Morph Market page when they have money to <laughs> uh, instead of saving it. Look, man, when you're making money in reptiles, anybody, people can vouch for me. I deal with a lot of younger herpers who buy animals from me. I tell, I talk more people, and this is just sounds like such BS, but it's the truth. I talk more people out of buying animals from me than buying animals from me. Like, I'm like, you know, I could tell people when they're strapped financially, like, listen, another animal is always going to come along. But whether you're getting your money from your job or your rate or, or your reptiles, what it comes down to are your bills paid. Do you have money put away? You know, you shouldn't buy animals on credit. You, you don't have the money. You shouldn't probably buy animals. That's my advice. You know, and people would say, I don't want to miss out on that animal. And I would say there's always another animal to come along. When you ask me, should people, which should people do invest their money? How should they spend it? If you're financially sound, your bills are paid. You have money put away. You have money put away for an emergency and you have disposal income. I think reptiles is a fine place to put that money. But, but why diamonds and carpets? Like why, like, why, like, why, like, you know. Um, so with car, so look, I work with the gam. I'm first off with the whole Carpondro thing. I don't necessarily, um, hate Carpondros. I, I really don't like them. I'll be honest with you. I don't like them because I don't like how they look, but it's not like I have anything majorly against them. Um, so I breed all the Jag stuff, right? And I like the Jag stuff and I like infusing the diamond blood into the Jag stuff. I just think it makes prettier animals. Um, and let's not forget that diamonds and carpets are a natural, uh, integrate in the wild. I, I forget where it is. I think it's the Meta, Riley can help me with this, Morelia, Metacafi with the coastals. I know it's the coastal carpets that yeah. naturally integrate with diamond pythons. So there, that's what I have going for me. And that's going to be the excuse I use. They naturally occur. They naturally hybridize in the wild and uh, the, the coastal carpets and the diamond pythons. So that's why I um, I do it. But the reality is I don't care. People make carpondras. I, like I said, I just don't like them. Every once in a while I'll see one, but I just have never seen one that blew me away, you know? Let's not take this away from anybody. Not even you, Riley, but respect, yeah. Riley. I haven't been to your house yet, so I can't really say too much. But I got to say right now, after visiting Gary Shabino's house, some of the nicest fucking jungle carpets I've ever seen that you were calling Gamma Line. Well, those are the, ga- those are the, yeah, the Jaguars, right? It's the Gamma Line, right? Jaguar. So just, oh, yeah. Sorry, Jaguars. Yeah, so, yeah, the Jaguar stuff. Yeah, so um, that line was started by, I believe, uh, you guys will keep me honest out there. I think John Battaglia coined that name Gamma Line. And then he, I think, I don't know if John's still in the project or not, but I know, I know Bill Spegel did a lot with that stuff too. But the guy who's really keeping at the forefront now is a guy like uh, uh, Martin Roseman, who I, I love Martin. He's a good friend. And uh, yeah, I just love making the brightest, sickest stuff I could make with the, with the, with the Jaguars. They're just awesome animals. I, mean, I, I just love that stuff. Um with the diamonds, I plan to keep that stuff pure as far as, you know, not with the jungle carpets. I plan to breed it, pure diamonds. And I'll tell you, as for you asked me heartbreak before, that was another big heartbreak. I had a, a fully striped diamond python about four years ago, very un, uh, quite a unique animal. And uh, Nick Mutton confirmed that was a kind of a one-of-a-kind animal, first stripe he had ever seen. And guys like Josh Easter confirmed that, and she laid one or two eggs, and then she died egg-bound, man. So that really sucked as well. But that was my first time ever trying to breed diamonds. So... How many yeah. times have you had females that were like egg bound? Had it twice now, both time with unfavorable results. If I was, it was going to happen again, you know, I could just tell people out there if you, you know, if you try bring it to a vet and they're going to give it oxytocin, it's really meant for mammals. I heard it works on turtles. It doesn't really work. Um, and uh, it's just, I would leave the animal alone uh, and, and let her pass the eggs out. As long as she did, you know, she's egg bound. She looks like she's suffering. Well, that's going to, you're going to require a vet visit. You could try soaking. I haven't had a lot, a lot of luck with soaking. Kevin McCurley showed a pretty unique um, process where he would take a probe and insert it into the animal's cloaca and try to work around. He was able to successfully remove eggs that way. Um, so in a best case scenario, she's going to pass them by herself. In a worst case scenario, um, you're going to have to take the animal to a vet. It's going to require surgery. And in many cases, it's going to uh, destroy um, you know, the animal she's not going to be able to produce anymore. So uh, egg bound, uh, yeah, it just goes one way or the other, man. It's, there's, there's very little gray area with that. They either pass them or they don't, man. Very little gray area. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you 
the one, the only, Mice Man. Who the hell are hey. you? Hello. Hello. You <laughs> Who the hell are you? Hey, uh, what's up, Gary? What, uh, what, what would it be possible to get a dice on with a trap few minutes? Like, how you doing? I'm doing good. You MJ? Yeah, I'm MJ. You Mexican? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm Mexican. What's the big problem? You should stick to the script, MJ. Oh! <laughs> you know, I've been to Mexico, MJ. You know what the what? problem with Mexico is? What, too many drugs? No. Too many Mexicans. Oh! <laughs> All right, listen. All right, let's get together here, mice, okay? What do you think of bioactive setups for chondros? And do not go non-mice on us. Let's tell us, please. Mice man don't like him because once I was banging this chick with a bioactive setup, I pulled springtails out of my ass for like three weeks. Oh, I'm over here now. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry, Mice Man. So, Mice Man, I know Gary does not like them, but what do you think of Carpondros, please? Oh, the Mice Man, he doesn't have a problem with Carpondros. He loves all animals. In fact, I've even dated a few pigs. Oh! Very beautiful answer. Um, you know, my, my next question here, Mice Man, would you ever keep a venomous reptile? Oh, oh, venomous reptiles? No, the Dice Man, they're too much work. Let me tell you something. One time, I was dating this chick for about a year, and she got bit by my Gaboon Viper. She starts crying hysterically. I'm going to die. I'm going to die, she says. I says, honey, <laughs> why are you crying? I'm the one who's got to find a new girlfriend. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mice Man. So, are you concerned about Nido? And is it something to take seriously? Oh, the Nido, oh, the Dice Man, Mice Man's definitely concerned about Nido. In fact, I think everybody should be concerned about Nido. Let me tell you something. The Mice Man, I was over at Prehistoric Pets last week. They're so concerned about Nido, they started out, they started handing out condoms to their mites. Oh! No! <laughs> I'm over here now. No, that was too fucking much. Wow! Oh! Mice man, you're on fire. I'll give you one more question. Go ahead, MJ. Okay. All right, okay, here we go. Get it together, guys. Super chats for Mice man. If you like this, super chat for Mice man. This goes to USR. Here we go. Last question, Mice. Do you think that the ball python market will be affected by the recession? Affected? Let me put it to you this way. I heard Justin Kabelka, Miguel Garcia, and Bob Vu recently joined OnlyFans, and they're all in the same video. Oh! <laughs> Tell you something, MJ. I actually watched it, and those guys are pretty well hung. But you probably already knew that. Oh! <laughs> Oh, Mice Man, now. you are over. Hey, listen, Mice Man, thank you so much for the time. I, I don't. I mean, I don't know what this is going to cost me, but uh, anyone out, anything you want to say to your to your lovers and your supporters out there on GS Reptiles YouTube? Just subscribe to that bald nerd's channel and give him a few likes. He seems to like playing with his snakes all day. Mice Man has no patience for that stuff. I just want to take a moment. That's one of my biggest mentors, one of my biggest inspirations, one of the biggest people I look up to on a whole scale of what I do. That was amazing. Thank you so much for everyone who tapped in. Hit the like button. I have quite a bit of a night ahead of me. I have a whole day ahead of me. Who's ready for Reptile Super Show tomorrow? You could catch me there with my crew, Desiree Manat, Mark Bailey. You got the homie Alex Pandafana with his beautiful girlfriend, Renee with all the crew. Listen, we're going to be deep. Herp time in the building. 
who is ready for Pomona Reptile Super Show, I'm going to be very active. I'm going to tell you that right now. Okay, so go follow me on Instagram, Trap Talk 61, Trap God 619. Go follow Gary Shavino first and foremost, GS Reptiles. Subscribe to this YouTube channel, guys. Don't let don't let culture uh, don't let the culture cancel cancel culture. My wait, cancel culture. What am I saying? Cancel culture, right? <laughs> because at the end of the day, we are above that. We are going to keep it moving. This is all about the animals, and what an amazing episode.